All right, let's take a look at this lap. So this might end up being one of the hardest laps that you'll have to deal with in C-Fixed for a while. So we're just going to get right into it. I, I like to do it on the second lap. I don't think the first lap has enough grip to make one and two work specifically. So coming to your second lap, I just want to roll this outside with my left side tires kind of on the white dash line. And then just getting to the throttle as early as possible because the car will be loose. I slide up a little bit more than I want to, but as long as I'm not in the wall, I'm fine. Uh, I cut down a little bit because I slid up, but in general, it's completely fine just to roll this outside white line because the exit is so wide when you're coming from up top that you can kind of just step on the gas and go and it'll help the car not get loose. What you don't want to happen is when you're sliding up the track, like from here to here, if you go too low, then you will, won't be able to make the corner exit without spinning the rear tires. And uh, that'll really hurt your run. Doesn't matter too much at Richmond, I guess, but it matters for at least like a 10th if you're, if you get it really bad, for instance. Okay. So turn one in, and turn three, I'm going to approach the same way. I want to get to the bottom as early as possible. So I'm actually entering early as opposed to late. Like you can get on the brakes a lot later than I did and make the corner. But my goal is to get the car on the right rear tire and just rotate it and hook it around the bottom and set up myself for a straight line exit. So how do I do that? I Try not to get to the bottom until about a third to halfway through the corner. Because if you get to the bottom too early, you're going to be just rolling the bottom and waiting there, and that's slow. What you want to do is get to the bottom right before you want to hook it. And you want to hook it right at that halfway mark. So I'm holding my 30% brake all the way down the hill. Bring it a little bit farther down to a trail as we get closer. And then right before we get to the yellow line, don't wait to get to the yellow line before getting your throttle on. You want to get on your throttle about a quarter of a lane from the yellow line. And then that should help rotate the car. See how I'm getting loose under throttle. And now we're gonna use our throttle up as our means of rotation and just cut this last piece of, of apron. We don't wanna get our tire on the apron so that line wasn't exactly correct, but we wanna get this cut just so it's perfectly on that apron and we can get a straight line off so you'll see here i'm just perfectly on the apron and it is loose like this is one of the hardest corner exits like i can think of in a fixed setup if you set it up a bit wider here it'll make it easier for you but setting it up wider will also be slower so take this with a grain of salt you can maybe get within like half a tenth of this by setting up a little bit wider, like maybe being like half a lane up throughout this whole way. And then instead of having this angle to the bottom, you'd have something like this angle to the bottom. That'll help a lot, but it's just a little tiny bit slower. So I'm picking up the throttle before I get to the yellow, hooking the bottom, getting that rotation, and then straightening out the wheel and just praying that the car rotates itself off the corner pretty much. And you kind of know it will but it's still very sketchy. So let's look at that one more time, no pausing. Trail break down to the bottom, pick up the gas about a quarter of the lane from the bottom, start the rotation, hook your left on the apron, and open up the wheel and just let the car rotate on exit on its own. And you see, I'm just, I'm fishtailing. I'm, I have to fishtail this straight away because of how sketchy that exit was. But now we're going straight into turn three. Biggest issue you can have in this uh, track here is overdriving turn three. Uh, this is very deceiving. If you don't make the bottom early, you're not going to make it at all. So I get on the brake again, very early. It seems like we're still on the straightaway. The corner hasn't even begun yet. And I'm just trail braking at about 15 to 20% all the way to the bottom. And once again, right before we get to the bottom, I'm going to pick up my partial throttle about a quarter of the lane from the bottom and then meet the yellow line, kind of kiss it, and then drive it straight back up and try to keep that rear wheel engaged. So on corners like this, uh, on Richmond, when you're coming into a corner on a tri-oval, you're gonna have a wider exit. So when you have a wider exit, it's more uh, better on these loose setups to just drive straight up to the wall and let the looseness of your car eventually rotate it along the wall. So we'll take a look at that one more time, no pausing. 
So trail breaking all the way down to the bottom. We pick up the partial throttle right before we get to the yellow, hook it along the yellow a little bit, but it's more of like a kiss. And then we drive straight back up the track, open up the wheel as early as possible to help with our grip. And then we just drive it all the way back to the start finish line. All right, now let's go take a look at long run. All right, now let's talk about long run. So I think for the most part, the lines are gonna stay the same between short run and long run. And it's just all about how you adjust your points. So I still like the idea of getting to the bottom really early both corners. Uh, sometimes a second line can start working uh, for one and two, but with the truck, it's, it's pretty loose on exit. So there's two things you need to focus on. One, getting to the bottom so that you're preserving your right front tire and two, uh, not getting in the throttle too hard too early on the coming off these corners because that will lead to some right rear wear that you don't need to have. Now, I don't know how long these long runs are going to be in these races because you don't tend to get long runs on short tracks and see fixed, but you should always be ready for it. So if you really need to make up time, you can go that a couple ways. Like you can dive in deeper and run the second line here in one and two if you really need to. Get this kind of late apex going. And that kind of helps. You can see that on this stage of my tires, it's just as good as a conservative bottom line. And that top line, you probably want to get acquainted with because when you're when you're side by side, you, you probably want to be the guy on top in one and two. Because if you're the guy on the bottom, like let's say that I'm down on the bottom here, and I have to choke even a lane further down like this, uh, I lose so much time because I can't slide up as much as I would want to. So when you're defending, you really want to take that top in one and two. Three and four probably as well, but it's a little bit wider. You can kind of make it work on the bottom, especially if you hook it, but one and two, you can really kind of pinch them down on the second lane here, and then just use up all the space that the track gives you and drive it up to the wall. Whereas in three and four, the second lane doesn't work quite as well, like up here. You just start sliding up really, really early, and you're not even able to get a run compared to the bottom that well. Maybe a little bit, but you lose so much on corner entry. Like I'll just run a bottom, bottom lap here. You see in one and two, I kind of give it all, almost all back. But in three and four, getting to the bottom is like super, super good. And I can come up here and pull just as good of a run as that top did. Just a bit, but it was just still a lot better. So if you're gonna defend one and two, defend high, Three and four, I really do like that bottom. I don't think it's gonna be very easy to pass on the bottom. But as the tires wear, you know, pretty standard, just back up all your entry points, make sure you're hitting your marks, don't overdrive because someone's in your mirror. Just drive as easy as you need to to hit your marks. If you're not hitting the bottom every corner and if maybe you have to like turn a ton of wheel to get to the bottom, that's probably telling you that you're too, you're cooking it too much on entry. Like I can, dive really deep here and then like oh crank the wheel keep on the bottom like that's cool I, I'm probably gonna be a little bit faster because of that lap uh, especially because I've had a bad exit there apparently but that's gonna be horrible on your long run tires so that's like something that you can do in a short run a green white checker type situation but we can see here I'll do a turn here really early entry keep it on the bottom give up like a full tenth there but then I'm able to drive off the corner and get pretty much almost all that time back, and it's so much better on the tires. So, if you have at least a little bit of breathing room and everything is within your control in the race, I don't recommend overdriving these corners. Take them earlier than you even think is possible, especially three and four. Being on that bottom is so important in three and four to save tires. Because if you miss it, you're just gonna use a ton of wheel. But anyways, let's check tires here. Did a few laps there just see where the flow of the tire wear is going it's probably going to be fairly even maybe a bit on the right front we ended on 96 96 so like i was saying those lines will help you even out your tire wear and then you just back up the corners a bit and you're going to be saving tire all right thank you all for watching hope you have a wonderful day and i hope to see you all on the track